He's the much-loved monarch who sets the chaotic events of House of the Dragon in motion, but why was the so-called good king so popular? Here's a quick lesson on the show. Game of Thrones ended its epic run back in May of 2019, and now House of the Dragon is bringing fans back to Westeros in droves, though this time they're watching a story set nearly two centuries before the original series. Focusing on the powerful dragon-riding Targaryen family long before their descendant Daenerys ever traveled on Dragonback, House of the Dragon kicks off even earlier than that, with a council that chooses Viserys Targaryen as the new monarch when there's not a clear line of succession. Chosen over his cousin, Princess Rhaenys, as the next king of the Seven Kingdoms, Viserys is, on the surface, a fair, just king with a good heart, who's always trying to do what's best for the realm. As king, it is my obligation to avoid war, until such time it is unavoidable. With that said, it seems like those around him don't take him particularly seriously, and everyone from Rhaenys to her husband, Corlys Velaryon, to the now former Hand of the King, Otto Hightower, frequently outsmart and manipulate the king for their own purposes. So who chooses Viserys as the next ruler of the realm? Well, that would be the Great Council of King Jaehaerys Targaryen, briefly played by Michael Carter in the series premiere of House of the Dragon. Why does Jaehaerys loom so large over Viserys, and what exactly was his legacy? Known by the nickname Good King, Jaehaerys I was one of the most popular kings in the history of the Seven Kingdoms. Though his fellow beloved king Aegon the Conqueror was known as a fierce warrior and was the first king of the Seven Kingdoms, Jaehaerys held an important record as the longest reigning monarch in the history of the realm. According to George R.R. R. Martin's source material Fire and Blood, Jaehaerys ruled the Seven Kingdoms for a whopping 55 years, and by all accounts, they were pretty uniformly good ones as well. Jaehaerys' legacy is also pretty storied. He's credited with keeping the realm peaceful and prosperous, and he also was able to forge truces between warring houses to keep things level, including one between House Bracken and House Blackwood, two houses of the Riverlands. In his youth, Jaehaerys was also a formidable fighter, facing off personally against Dornish forces during a skirmish known as the Third Dornish War. And in the early days of his reign, he more or less created a system of laws that would govern the realm for centuries to come. Finally, he was also famous as a dragon rider. He rode Vermithor, who was the third largest dragon in Westerosi history, behind Beleriand, whose skull resides in the crypts of King's Landing, and Vagar, whose whereabouts are unknown during the events of House of the Dragon so far. Faced with a lack of direct heirs, Jaehaerys and his great council eventually chooses his grandson Viserys over his granddaughter, Rhaenys. But did he make the right choice? As the series opens, Viserys is awaiting the birth of his second child, whom he hopes will be a son. Though it is, the infant dies, along with Viserys' first wife, Emma, leaving him heartbroken. Though he then names his daughter and only child, Rhaenyra, as his official heir, he goes on to marry again and produces a son, Aegon, whose mere existence kicks off the central conflict of House of the Dragon. Viserys is, for the first five episodes, in miserably poor health and seemingly ineffective. He's unable to shut down the armies of the Stepstones, leaving his brother Daemon and Corlys to clean up his mess. Add it to the chair. At the end of We Light the Way, the fifth episode, the king flat out collapses, and who knows what his health will be like moving forward. Episode 6 promises a massive time jump, and whatever happens next, it's all thanks to the good king.